Rick, partying with my lady. Come on, Alex, you got a hundred ladies. I don't recall asking you for help with any of them. Chill a little. We got a major score going down in two days. You have to have me on the inside. Two days is plenty of time to find another security guard. But this doesn't mean anything. She's just another hot looking. <laughs> One security guard. Now you have to find me another. This is the first weekend the Diamond Association has given us complete responsibility for their convention. Now that means no Brinks and no Pinkertons. Just PSI. This is the crown jewels of Monaco collection and it's the centerpiece of this show. If anything out of the ordinary happens in this hotel, I mean burglar alarm, fire alarm, power outage, whatever, this is what'll happen. And if that happens, just keep everybody calm, because these doors will be opened within minutes by special codes known only to me and my highest ranking officers. Well, we open in a few hours, so let's get to it. Okay. Well, you know, I'm an experienced undercover cop. <laughs> I can be much more useful in civilian clothes, you know, observing, coordinating. Cody, I got my own problems. I spent three months training a good young officer like Rick Lockwood, and 24 hours before the show, he calls up and quits and runs off to Florida with some bimbo. Now, I need you down here in uniform more than ever, okay? I'd be more effective if I was working undercover as your number one man. Cody, you're not my number one man. You're not my number two man. In fact, I'd run out of fingers before I even got to you in the pecking order. You're just another piece of manpower that's been sent to me. A cog in the wheel. Uh, a piece in the puzzle. Flying the ointment, huh? No, that's Danny. Yeah. And speaking of Danny, you know, she'd take down one of these dealers just to keep in practice. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, we're standing around here talking, wondering what she's doing. Find her. Yes, sir. Only I'd been born agile and light. My life's long dream would be to be a, a world-class jewelry. <laughs> I've mentioned that before. Endlessly. But that ship sailed, Uncle Ray. This is the era of hot tech. If you knew what kind of trap awaits the misguided thief who wanders in here, you'd be having nightmares instead of daydreams. <laughs> oh, you just pulled my leg. You think so, do you? You think it's too late for me to prove to the world where I might have been? Old fraud trying to impress me when you haven't given this caper one minute's thought. I cut the power. Take the 90 seconds before the backup generator kicks in to enter the case through the ventilation shaft. Pressed all in black so that not even ambient light would reflect off me. Scoop up the treasure. Get out through the ventilation shaft before the lights come on again. Oh, great, you naughty old man. You're good. <laughs> well. Uncle Ray. <laughs> now, what could possibly bring you to a diamond exhibit? Well, it's a public display, Cody. I'm a member of the public. <laughs> mm, yeah, public enemy number one. Danny, Mr. Durney would like to see you upstairs, and I really see no reason why you got to come down here every 20 minutes. What can I say? I love my work. Yeah, yeah, well, the janitors are complaining about having to wipe your drool off the display windows. <laughs> Hi, Cody. And where have they been wiping your jewel from? She's a buyer for the English Diamond Exchange. Need a little security orientation. Everything I do with her is strictly by the book. Right. The Kama Sutra. Monocle. I, I'll, I'll leave you to love, but it's still delightful foreplay. Oh, thank you. Huh? Excuse me. Oh, I see you found it, huh? Good. Who was that? He looked very familiar. Oh, never mind him. Mr. Durning, doesn't Danny look sensational in that new dress? Another new dress, huh? Did you charge that to PSI? Well, you said you wanted all the hostesses to look nice, and I saw this at the window in Crescendo, and... Wrong. You're not a hostess. 
You're a receptionist in our office upstairs, so take it back. And I'm telling that shop to call me anytime you walk through their door. What'd you do that for, snitch? Hey, the idea is for you to blend in wherever you go, not stand out. I mean, why don't you light your hair on fire and go with your dress? If you got it, flaunt it. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. What have you got for us? Security's better than I expected, but I've found the weak link. See the one near the center of the display case? His name is Cody Powell, and that's his wife, Danny. They both work for PSI, and they're newlyweds. Look how he can't take his eyes off her. And remember, I'm watching every move you make till we leave this display floor. They're practically inseparable. You control her, Mr. Bergen, and I believe you'll own him. Very good, Anne. I want that dress. Don't sell it. I'll be back. Excuse me, Mrs. Powell? Mm -hmm. I'm Anne de Ruin from the English Diamond Exchange. Your husband, Cody, wants to meet you in the parking lot. Mm -hmm. And what were you doing with my husband in the parking lot? Business. You see, I specialize in large gems. And Cody is helping me to display them. I'll bet he is. I have some emeralds to bring in from the car, and he wanted you to help him. No. Actually, he just wants to keep an eye on me, but let's humor him. If you'll walk this way? Well, I'll try. You know, the hotel has valet service. You didn't have to park in the next time zone. My boss insists that I keep a very low profile. Has he seen that dress? Well, here's my car, but where's Cody? <laughs> Maybe you should check the back seat. This is very disturbing. I better make sure the emeralds are still here. Get in. Hey, I don't do anything in the back of a car. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Hell, you're hurting me! What do you want? Uh. What do you want? Mr. Ferret Face Kellogg. Nobody treats me like this. Gun or no gun. She's dead right. Gotta learn how to entertain a lady, Ed. Why don't you come inside out of this terrible heat? No, 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 not you, Ed. You take the first watch. Alex, it's gotta be 110 out here. I'll take the first watch. Danny's missing. This is another one of those scams, Cody. Bet you that if we could do a head count, we'd find that one of those diamond wholesalers out in that room has been swindled out of a sizable chunk of his inventory. And the former Mrs. Powell is buying a ticket to Brazil by now. Yeah, he's right here. Yeah, keep it short, will you? I want to get on this thing with Danny before he gets out of hand. Powell, I've got your pretty young wife. Or anyone else about this call before we set up a meeting with you. And it'll be our honeymoon and your worst nightmare. Thank you. The short out for you? Look, Cody, you know, I only agreed to give you and Danny protection out here on the condition that you keep her in line and she behave herself. Hey, why do you always assume the worst about her, huh? Why can't you just once just treat her like a human being? Are we talking about the same human being? What this is all about. I need some cooperation from your husband. Kind of cooperation. We're planning on a robbery. We need an inside man, so you're going to be our guest for a short time. Guest, huh? I'm sorry about the accommodations, but I'm going to make you very comfortable. So when you talk to your husband about your treatment here, I have no reason to freak out and complicate our plans. No, I will say one thing about you, Alex. You're not the kind of cement brain that Ed here is. Just tell me what'll make you happy. Can I have a drink of water? Ed, get the lady some water. I could 
And she's a new dress, too. This one's in pretty bad shape. Forget it. If I had my way, you'd be buck naked right now. Hey! Behave yourself in front of the lady, okay? Now, what sort of dress? Anything you like. Well, this morning I tried on this green number at Crescendo. It was very hot, but a little pricey. Worth every penny, I'm sure. Thank you. Do it. Size six. Make sure you get the emerald green, not the lime. And if it's not in the window, check the return rack. Could I talk to you? What are we doing? You want this broad? Just take her. Hey, Eddie, Eddie, what's your sense of romance? I don't want to take her. I want her to want me to take her. You and your women. You know, if you spent half your romance time thinking about your work, we wouldn't still be working for your uncle. Just go get the dress. Can he also get some mineral water? So how's this? Too tight? Oh, it's just swell. I don't know how I ever got along with that one. When I get back, we can take this off. If you behave yourself. Get back? What do you mean, get back? It's one more little thing I've got to tidy up. As soon as I take care of this, you'll have my full attention. than hell out here. Have Ed come and spell me. I have got to get indoors. That wouldn't be awkward for me. I have company. Alex, don't you think it's a little dangerous considering we can't get the job done without her husband's cooperation? You're telling me my business? Well, you wouldn't be taking a chance on a new security guard now if you hadn't gone and lost it with Rick. He was nice and cool and corrupt. Yeah, Rick was cool, all right? Taking you right under my nose. Yeah, you were both cool. Bring it up to upset you. I'm just pointing out. Uh, I've worked hard to make it up to you. I'd like to do even more. But there's one problem. I got a new girlfriend now. Mr. Delacourt, how's everything in Palm Beach? Uh, you know, it's horrible, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Yes, bankruptcy's a terrible thing, especially at your age. Sit down. Yes, a lifetime of work snuffed out by a horde of insensitive, miserable creditors. That's not going to happen to you, Walter. Working together, we're going to see that you spend the rest of your days enjoying the good life. I've never broken the law before. You're not breaking it now. You're just going to be the innocent victim of a band of ruthless thieves and a profit participant. I don't mind telling you, I'm scared to death. Well, don't be. All you have to do is go to the suite we've set up for you as legitimate buyers. You'll display your diamonds like any of the other 500 wholesalers at the convention. Now, when you get there, escorted by our carefully placed security guard, you'll be robbed, bound, and gagged, and we'll leave you there. You'll also get 50% of everything we fence the diamonds for. You make it sound so easy, like nothing could go wrong. Walter, we've done this many times before, without a hitch. It's one thing I don't understand. What's that? Well, if the security guard is going to take the blame as the inside man, how do you prevent him from giving us all away? Look, the worst he can get is five years as a first-time offender. Besides, we're going to pay him ten times what he could ever earn during that period of time. Even if he does talk, Walter. Here's the best part of it for you. He doesn't know you're in on it. What kind of fashion mutant buys a great dress like this but doesn't get the shoes to match? Forgive him, Danny. He's from New Jersey. Mm hmm. I might. If he'll get me a mineral water. Go ahead. Oh. 
feels so good to walk again. Oh. Thanks for losing the cuffs. No problem. There's nothing out there for 40 miles but desert and snakes. No one would last two hours. From the spring outside. Gross. I asked for Perrier and he gives me water out of the ground. Where do you think Perrier comes from, pea brain? France. I'm sorry to bother you so soon about this, but you did ask me to call if anything came up regarding Danny Powell. Oh, does she stop by there again? No, but a very odd thing just happened. A man came in and bought the same dress she returned this morning. He was very specific about wanting that exact dress. Same size, same color. Did he try to charge it to me? No, he paid cash. Hundred dollar bills, in fact. It was just such a coincidence that I suddenly got worried. Yeah, I'll check into that, Carla. Thanks a lot for the call. I appreciate it. Anytime. Well, Danny's found herself a real pigeon. Some guy just walked into Carla's shop and plopped down a pile of $100 bills for that famous dress in Danny's size and color. So? Cody, where's that special antenna of yours that's always on the lookout for one of her scams? I'm telling you, she's out there and she's back in business. And with the kind of marks we got at this convention. Well, I'm betting that this is the big one. She's going to jump ship. Well, with all due respect, sir, this time, I don't think so. <laughs> That's the man who bought the dress. All right, freeze and copy every good shot of this guy's face. Okay, and I want that counter check for fingerprints. I want the fastest ID I can get on this bum. All right, you got it. All right, thanks. So tell me about this robbery. How much you figure on getting for the crown jewels of Monaco? We aren't going after the crown jewels. Why not? That would be too rich for his uncle's taste. He likes to go after nice, safe little hits. Ed, go for a walk. It's your shift on the watch. Hey, let Ann waste her time. Nobody ever comes out here during the summer. I said go. Something I want you to take care of. Like what? You'll know when you get there. Just go. Don't ask too many questions about why we don't go for big scores, honey. It puts him in a bad mood. You won't like that. I promise you. I suppose you'll want to see his eminence. Bishop! An infidel. Excuse me, ladies. Cody! To what do I owe this extremely unexpected visit? Danny's gone. I got a phone call. Said she was kidnapped. Good Lord! You were supposed to take care of her. Hey! Hey! Oh, hey, this is serious. And you guys don't know anything about this? Uh, in fact, we want to do everything we can to help you find her. <sighs> Damn it. This is the one time I wish she really did split on me. But if she did, I figured she'd tell you guys. She would have. Ray, I hate to think what might happen to her out there. Who knows what kind of hell she's going through? This orange juice isn't fresh squeezes from concentrate. Mm. That's all they had. What is this, Seward? Uh, that's mine. Tongue and liverwurst with coleslaw on pumpernickel. That is disgusting. Oh. I cannot believe your dietary habits. I would hate to see your lower intestines. I'd love to see yours. Strung all over this cabin. Uh-huh. Here's what you have to do to get Danny back. Well, look, I'm not talking until I'm sure she's okay. I want a meeting face to face. How was expected. Be in your truck in one hour with the police radio tuned to TAC 3. We'll be in touch. Fine. I've got your pretty young wife. Tell the police. This is from the permanent log of your private home. set up a meeting with you. And it'll be our honeymoon. And your worst nightmare. No wonder Cody clammed up. He's trying to save her all by himself. That won't work. 
Not one word to Cody. I know about this. Understood? Yes, sir. Hey, Fuji. You busy? Yes, Cody. Good. Listen, I need a little help with a hypothetical situation. Oh, my favorite kind. Nothing's on the line. Yeah, we better go ahead. Yeah, well, say I was looking for a way to track somebody down without them knowing it. And I mean a life or death situation, say. Oh, a possible life and death hypothetical situation. Yeah. Would this someone be checking you for bugs? Definitely. Then, hypothetically, we'd have to track them through thin air. That's impossible? No, not if they're carrying anything electronic. A two-way radio, CB, cellular telephone. <laughs> say they had that. Okay, then what? Well, if any one of them is operational, we can triangulate their position. Huh. All we have to do is follow their electronic footprint. Okay, good. So, so how do you do that? Now, how do you, can you set something up? Can you set up a test or something like that? Sure, like when? Like five minutes ago? Ah, the possible life and death hypothetical emergency. Yeah, I'll do anything that you want. Okay, 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 but there's something you should know, Cody. If you don't already, all the PSI trucks are fitted with automatic locators. We like to keep track of all our vehicles at all times. Now, if these people were to find it, you could be in for some big trouble. How would one go about disengaging a device like that? Oh, hypothetically. Chief and I have had some discussions, and we've agreed that you key people should be alerted. Danny Powell may have been taken hostage. Oh now, there hasn't been any ransom demand yet, but Cody did receive a phone call indicating that she's being held against her will. In which case, if he should come to any of you directly for help, I want you to appear to cooperate, but notify me immediately. Now, is that understood? I mean, you do not make deals with kidnappers. You have to hit them hard, you have to hit them fast. Until we get Mrs. Powell back, the SWAT team is on alert and available to Matt around the clock. There's a strong possibility that these kidnappers are planning some kind of a robbery. And they may be seeking to coerce Cody's cooperation. Now, any questions? Well, so what happens if we give you the information from Cody and you decide to hit hard and fast? Danny could get killed. I'm afraid, statistically, that no matter what we do, there's a likelihood that we could lose Danny. Jojo, during here. You want to activate that locator on Cody's truck? Right away, sir. That's some great equipment you've got. I could follow him in a dust storm through a double eclipse. Cody's truck's been stopped for a while. Must be their rendezvous point. This is Chief Hollings. Give our location to my SWAT team. Tell them we'll rendezvous at Dyer Road. Here it is. Oh, yeah. Try to step into your cop. We wrote the book, Bernie. I'm here. Congratulations, Cody. I see you were smart enough to come alone. Well, that was the bargain. Because if you hadn't, there was a surprise for you. Check under the phone. I appreciate your restraint. So where to now? You're here.
Hold it right there. Where's Danny? Hold on a second. You don't mind if that checks you for homing devices, do you? Knock yourself out. He's clean. Go check the truck. Stay so I can get out of this, okay? Don't worry, I'll get you out. What do you want? Just a little help at the convention when we take down a certain prominent diamond dealer. You cooperate, and have your bride back in a few hours. Which dealer? All in due time, Cody. You see any problem in our arrangement? Diamonds can be replaced. Danny can't. A smart fellow. Truck's clean. We'll be in touch. And remember, Cody, anything goes wrong, it's the last time you ever see her. Do you hang in there, okay, with these beer in? Got a little plan. We got a match on your photo. The name's Ed Kellogg. He's got a rap sheet you could paper your house with. Currently thought to be working with Frank Bergen and his nephew Alex. His specialty is jewelry and insurance fraud. Good work, Jojo. Good work. Hey, look, see what else you can find on the gang members, all right? And patch me through to Fuji. PSI out. Buzz like the last one, my whole fleet's gonna be a rolling junkyard. Hi, Cody. Hey, it worked like a charm. I've got a lock on them from their cellular phone, so leave your radio on. I'll send it through to your tracking monitor. All right. Okay, I'm getting it now. You can track them as long as that phone stays powered up. Meeting went fine, Uncle Frank. I'll fill you in later. You sure your equipment's working? It's slowing down. This is it. Me, Matt. It means that when I find Cody Powell, he's gonna die a slow, agonizing, horrible death.
<laughs> You've been expecting your hero. Haven't we, Alex? Excellent. Now, if you'll drop the gun. I'm disappointed in you, Cody. I thought you'd play straight with us. I should tell you that my office computer has a whole pile of information on Ed Kellogg and the entire Frank Bergen gang, including his nephew, Alex. And if you don't get back in one piece, this information gets back to the police. Wait, I'm not finished. Now, Danny and I aren't exactly what we've seen. In fact, she's probably the best young con woman in America. Shut up! We're members of a gang that specialize in the big grift. Yeah. And I'm the tooth fairy. Ed's right. He's nuts. <laughs> the stress is getting to him. Hey, you guys got connections? Check it out. Check out the Raymond Barkley gang. Ray, his niece, and Dodger, the widower, and me, Romeo. What do you got to lose? Come on. You still need me working on the inside, don't you? Well, everything the guy said checks out. Raymond Barkley runs a top-flight organization of scam artists. They gravitate toward high rollers. They even pulled a couple of estate jewelry cons in Chicago and Houston. Hey, you know, that dress thing was a good idea. Thank you. So I found out who these guys are. They started as a trio, including your friend Anne. After a gunshot about four hours ago, she hasn't been heard from. I don't think they plan on letting anybody out of this thing alive. So I say we go ahead and use them. His record will only make it more believable that he was behind the robbery. And whether they believe him or not won't matter, since we don't plan to leave him alive. Look, I gotta go now. This heist comes down in a couple of hours, and uh, my friend Walt is having an anxiety attack. What did you mean? You weren't planning to leave him alive. You're talking about that poor guard, aren't you? Okay, sport. Let's see if we believe your story. What's your angle? The same as yours. We've been here for months trying to set up a score. Yeah. But a big grown-up professional score, not just one little dealer. Well, he's after one little deal. <laughs> Tell him. Shut up, Ed. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't want to offend Uncle Frank. Yes, what is it, Waller? I don't think I could, I could do this. I'm in the lobby. I had to sit down. You can do it. Oh, I, I, I don't feel very well. Look, Walter, I want you to go down to that hotel vault and take your diamond case out of it. And then take it up to your suite and sit and wait. We'll even have the guard come up to the suite and meet you there instead of in the lobby. No. Uh, no, I don't think I can meet anybody any place. <gasps> Damn it, Delacourt, you do what I tell you. <laughs> now you go get that case or I'm going to whack you and your whole family. <laughs> What's happening? Hello? Yeah, Frank. Just get ready to move out. And I want you to forget it. What are you talking about forget it? We're only an hour from payday. Delacorte collapsed in the lobby. He's dead. We got two months' work in this thing. Well, I'm pulling the plug. I'm going to check out. I want you to clean up loose ends and meet me in Chicago tomorrow. Uncle Frank, we're walking away from a sweet setup. There's got to be millions floating around a convention floor, even more in the main display case. I don't know what you're talking about. We had a plan, we hit a snag, we pull out. It's the way I taught you, it's the way I work. What about these people? Kill them and bury them in the desert. This operation is terminated. hundred million dollars minimum, even if you break up all the stones. Which you gotta do, because it's so traceable. But we got that all worked out, don't we? Mm -hmm. You ought to hear this, Alex. What they got is really hot. Why not? I got a few minutes to kill. The whole key to the caper is that the special display case holding the Monaco collection is not hardwired into the hotel security system. It's a temporary installation. So? So, it means you cut the electricity to the ballroom, you disable all the alarms. The key security spots will be taken by my uncle's people. We'll have 90 seconds before the backup generator kicks in to grab all the jewels we can carry. And just how many other players would I have to worry about? You wouldn't have to worry about anyone. You've already checked out my Uncle Ray's gang. Unless you have a problem with uncles. What do you say, Alex? Hey, I think it could work. What are you doing? Do you realize that you are now helping these guys pull off the biggest robbery in the history of Palm Springs? I am just trying to keep us alive. If they don't pull off this caper, they're going to kill us. 
Bill, you didn't have to tell him everything. Now we really got a problem. Hello? Uncle Ray. Danny. Good Lord, where are you? That's not important, Uncle Ray. I got some great news. Some additional help to pull off your Monaco job. Really? What kind of help? Very experienced, I can assure you. They'll fit right in with you, me, Cody, and Dodger. Where is Cody? Oh, he's right here. I know the additional people make our share a little smaller, but this is even bigger than the Mardi Gras caper. You still ready to go at 7 tonight from the hotel sub-basement? You've got it. Look forward to seeing you. We've never pulled up a Mardi Gras caper. Oh, that's right. In the Mardi Gras caper, half the gang double-crossed and killed the other half. the backup generator will help. Try not to screw it up. Yeah, right. Hey, Sims. Hey, we're looking for you. We're leaving you. Report to Durning immediately. Damn, did he find out I was late today? Sorry. Try not to screw it up. This should take out the ballroom and the whole west wing. Get Fuji up here on the double. You get in here. I want to talk to you. What's this? Where'd this come from? From Cody, I took the liberty of running the check per his request. My God. Frank Bergen. <laughs> I feel like celebrating. Celebrating? <laughs> yeah, this guy, he's strictly smash and grab. I mean, this is small time stuff, at least by comparison. Yeah, yeah, I've been afraid that they were after the Monaco collection. Hey, what's in the sack? Refrigerator magnets. We'll attach them to the ducks and they'll show us the way home. Dodger will place them so they point to the laundry room. After the snatch, just follow them there. All right, everybody ready? Let's go get rich. We're gonna make a real killing. Hey, Alice. Follow the arrows. They'll lead us back to the laundry room. I'm here to relieve you. Mr. Durning wants to see you upstairs. Uh, wait a moment, please. We're doing a routine security check. One moment, please. Careful. Don't blow the breakers until everyone's out of the case. Harris, this guard at the display door, who is that? It's my relief. Relief. Wait a minute. I know who that is. Blow it. Everyone, please stand where you are. This is merely a temporary power outage. The emergency generators will kick on in 85 seconds. The security has everything under control. Hold your places, please. This is merely a temporary. Generators will kick on in 85 seconds. Everyone, please stand where you are. This is merely a temporary power outage. That's it. Time. Let's go. There's no reason to panic. There's nothing wrong. The emergency generator will kick in in a moment. Hold your places, please. Follow the arrows. They'll lead us back to the laundry room. 
And from there, Uncle Ray will lead us to a truck with a load and die. Yeah. We're gonna make a real killing. All right, this is it. Give me the jewels. I'll go down first, make sure Cody didn't mess things up. No, thanks. We'll go down first. I want you to stop through ceiling the grate and leaving us up here. Right. Not a thing. Try to follow me and you get a bullet. <laughs> Where's, where's Powell with the light? Who cares? Just find the door. What was that? A wall. A wall. Hey, it's about time. All right, everybody freeze. Your little heist is over. We're not pulling a heist. We're pulling a con. Come on. Put that down. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's another wall. You gotta find the wall set. Just find the damn door! I'm a little turned around here, okay? Alex? What? This wall is glass. Glass. Cody, when we were being held hostage together, it almost seemed to me like you really cared. I was just doing my job, keeping you alive. Oh, good. Because I wouldn't want you mooning around after me like some lovesick prairie dog. Oh, so this is what you people do on your days off, huh? Yeah, it's called relaxing. You ought to try sometime. Oh, I'd love to, Cody. But I'm too busy smoothing the ruffled feathers of my clients and replacing locator devices. Does this visit have a point, Durning, or did you just sense that we were enjoying ourselves and rushed over here to ruin it? No, I thought you might be interested to know that uh, Frank Bergen has been picked up in Chicago and is being extradited on conspiracy and murder charges. Whoa! I am good. <laughs> Not for a single minute did I buy your story that the Barkley gang pull this caper for altruistic reasons. So you cut me to the quick if you think I'd do something like that for mere money? What did you do it for? First of all, to save my niece's life. And secondly, to prove that I could pull it off. One of the great jewel robberies in history. I don't think anyone else will ever know, but... Uh, in my heart, I'm certain now that I could have been part of that pantheon of great jewel thieves. Do, do you really expect me to believe that you did all this for the prestige? I'm sorry. If I hadn't come along when I did, you and your niece would be in Rio by now. Oh, come on, Darren. You know that's not true. Oh, thank you, Cody. Yeah, Danny prefers Buenos Aires. Now it's my turn to write you a letter. Misusing the mail is a crime. She said I spin and round in my Tomorrow on CBS Sports, see the Lions take on the Bears, the Saints against the Rams, or other regional games in a day of NFL doubleheader action. Check local listings for the games in your area. And check in with the NFL Today, live at 1230 Eastern, tomorrow on CBS Sports. Thanks for being with CBS Tonight. Your local news is next.